All right, here's another episode of does a four inch nine millimeter rival a 357 magnum when that 357 magnum is in a two inch snub nose barrel today what i have to test is the federal hydroshock low recoil it's listed as the low recoil ammunition for both 357 and nine millimeter and there's no rated velocity on the boxes but on the website I was able to find that the 357 Magnum 130 grain is rated at 1,410 feet per second and the 135 grain 9 millimeter is rated at 1,060 feet per second. Both of these are pretty much within a normal power range for these different cartridges so I'm interested in, in what they're actually doing to make it low recoil and I'm a little bit skeptical if they're actually going to be low recoil and if they are will this affect this Hydroshack bullet at all. The last tighter shock I tested for the 357 Magnum was 158 grain. A little bit much for recoil. Um, I haven't tested uh, anything but the 124 grain hydro shock in the past. Um, that was quite a bit below rated velocity. But as always, we're going to go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy at the same time we're getting. And as always, we're going to go through the juggernaut box, which is four layers of denim, followed by one and three quarter inches of baloney to simulate flesh, followed by 3 8 inch particle board to sim simulate bone, sternum, and then into water jugs to catch the projectile. So let's get started with the test with the low recoil hydroshock ammunition. All right, first up is the 9 millimeter. It's rated at 1,060 feet per second. We'll see what we get out of my 4 inch barrel Ruger Security 9, if we can beat that 1,060. We're from about 5 yards. 988 998 1002 993 and 1019 so we did not meet that 1060 feet per second rate of velocity which is interesting I figured we would have but let's see how the 357 Magnum compares I know we will not get rate of velocity with that because we're doing a snub nose barrel, not a four inch barrel, which is typical. However, Federal does not list their barrel lengths, so we don't know. All right, Federal Hydroshock 357 Magnum low recoil. We'll see what kind of velocity and accuracy you get. It's rated at 1,410. It's probably out of a four inch barrel, but we'll see what we get out of the snub nose barrel. 'm there I think I hit the bar either that or, or just the concussion of it uh, knocked it because the bullet hole is pretty centered um, 1268 so not too bad. Wall 48. Error read. Wall 27. Wall 37. We'll run another round. Try to get a five shot average here. Twelve seventy-three. So, accuracy is pretty good. However, judging from the fact that my uh, thumb is throbbing as well as my uh, trigger finger, I would not consider that low recoil. That's anything but. That's uh, horrendous recoil. <laughs> a little bit better than the one fifty-eight grain, but not by a lot. Uh, just by a little bit. Now we'll see what we get in the uh, juggernaut box, what kind of uh, damage we get to the bologna and water jugs. So let's get started with that part of the test. Alright, let's see what we get with the 9mm low recoil 135 grain hydroshock. The 4 layers of denim, 1 and 3 quarter inches of bologna, 3 inch particle board, and into water jugs. And 
we did separate a little bit of baloney here and a decent hole through the particle board and decent amount of damage I suppose out the baloney. A little, little bit more than I expect actually. So let's see what we got in the water jugs. Jug one looks about like average damage. A little bit of particle board in there. Jug two looks pretty average for nine millimeter. We have a slight damage on jug three. Um, not really leaking though. And a hole off the back of jug two. And I see the bullet in jug two. And what we got there is complete jacket separation and fragmentation of the lead. So not an extraordinary amount of penetration and quite a bit of fragmentation. It's kind of hard to show this. Now let's see how the 357 Magnum compares. All right, 357 Magnum, Hydroshock low recoil. Let's see what we get to the four layers of denim, one three quarter inches baloney, three inch particle board, and into water jugs. That baloney almost hit me. To be honest, I don't even know where the particle board is. Oh, there it is. Uh, pretty good hole, and we broke the particle board. Baloney has pretty extensive damage. Pretty typical for what you would expect to see with a 357 Magnum, really any 357 Magnum cartridge. I'll see what we got in water jugs. Jug one certainly has a lot more damage than that nine millimeter. Pretty good damage. Jug two, right through, pretty good leaking. Looks like the bullet is starting to drift down a little bit. And jug three, we don't have any damage. In jug four, a little bit of denting out the back of jug three. And the bullet's in jug three. So definitely not over penetration, that's good. And here we are. It stayed together, so unlike the 158 grain Hydroshock, and unlike the nine millimeter Hydroshock low recoil, this actually stayed together, which has really not been typical for uh, most of the Hydroshock MOA tests. So, so far it's looking good for this round as a snub nose round. It seems pretty good. Recoils a little bit much, but if you had to use the cartridge in a short barreled revolver, it would work. It's not a uh, completely uncontrollable recoil and the accuracy was decent. So I would say overall, the nine millimeter isn't necessarily that good of a cartridge in the, in the low recoil Hydroshock. Felt about as low recoil as anything else. Accuracy was a little bit scattered, and that's what I typically start to see when we get beyond 124 grain bullets in 9mm. However, the Hydroshock and the 357 did quite well. I would say that this is a, a potential round for, for concealed carry use, home defense, even in a snub nose revolver. Now, if we put it in a 4 inch, we might get fragmentation, but so far, it's passing the snub nose test. So that's what you get today with the Federal Hydroshock low recoil. 9 millimeter 135 grain versus 357 Magnum 130 grain in a snub nose revolver. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.